This is for new owners of the National Geographic NT114CF telescope. This is a uh, 114 millimeter, which means it's a four and a half inch aperture Newtonian telescope. Newtonian telescopes, just so that you know, are designed specifically to do astronomy with. They're not designed for land viewing, but they do a phenomenal job for astronomy, and four and a half inches of aperture is enough aperture for you to see the broad range of celestial objects. That would include the moon, planets, a lot of deep sky objects, and it's a great way to get started. So what we have here is uh, basically two boxes that we pulled out uh, from the uh, gift box and uh, up on top is a spreader bar so you can just separate these two boxes out um, this particular box has the tripod this is a um, this is the uh, handle that locks uh, the altitude or the up and down motion of the uh, tripod head And this little lock right here uh, locks the side-to-side -side motion. You have a package with the uh, registration card and the instruction manual that has like uh, figures on how to assemble the mount, but uh, watching it through on this video might be a little bit simpler and clearer to you. First off, uh, we will extend the tripod legs. Now some people may be not tall enough to use the telescope with legs completely extended. For, for little kids, a lot of times you're gonna be down all the way, but uh, try coming in about halfway to start. So you're just gonna go halfway, and you got three legs to extend halfway. Like so. Then you're gonna fold the leg out all the way and push down on the spreader bar down here in the center. And this gives a nice rigid tripod. Final assembly is going to be to attach the um, accessory tray that goes in the middle. This is the top of the accessory tray with the raised lip like this. You got three holes to put in uh, your eyepieces or your Barlow lens. On the, this is the smooth bottom of the tray and it's keyed. So you can see it's got like three little slotted keys there and this center piece right here is keyed and all you do is you take it and then just lock it in place like so and now we have a nice rigid tripod next step is to open the accessory box and this is going to have the mount head and this is a nice mount head it's metal uh, construction you'll see that it's got a bolt here on the bottom And all we have to do is attach that like so and just tighten the screw. And now we have a head that can swivel back and forth, okay? It's got an attaching bolt right here at the top to attach the tube assembly onto the top of the mount. And over on this side, is a little knob here that locks, that can lock the head so it doesn't easily spin. Last part of the assembly of the head, the alt azimuth head is just to thread in the handle. This handle serves two functions. One is, is to uh, aim the telescope and the other is to lock the altitude. The altitude is the up and down motion, the azimuth of an alt az mount is the side-to-side -side motion. If you're a photographer, you'll recognize these motions as tilt and pan. So this piece is the actual telescope itself. It is a Newtonian reflector designed by Isaac Newton in 1668. Uh, this year, actually, the 2018 marks the 350th anniversary of the Newtonian design. Uh, and I'll show you how that works in a moment. But first, we're gonna attach it to the mount. Uh, you'll see that there is on the bottom is kind of this dovetail uh, mount like so and so the way the Newtonian works is 
this part where the focuser is aims towards the sky, okay? And the mirror is in the back. And once I open this up, you can see that mirror and you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm attaching it onto the saddle plate of the, of the mount and I'm just tightening it down, okay? And I've got my, my handle lock here kind of loose, so I'm just gonna lock it down here. I'll show you the focuser. The focuser is up here and just by turning this knob we can focus in, focus out. There's just like a little lens cover up here. There's also the big lens cover here and if you want to make it easy to pull this off you'll see there's a little uh, cover here in the middle but that allows you just to get the, uh, the main cover off and now you can see the business end of the telescope. Okay, Light is collected by this four and a half inch 114 millimeter aperture mirror in the back. It's kind of bowl shaped, okay? It is, um, it's ground to a precision surface and then aluminized up on top so it collects that light and starts to bring the light to a focus. Before it can hit focus, behind this black piece you see here is a flat mirror. Isaac Newton's design that he designed in 1668 captured light in the back deflected light off to the side to where the eyepiece is. And so this was a revolutionary design of its day and um, gave uh, Isaac Newton a lot of recognition from the scientific community. Uh, this four and a half inches of aperture is enough aperture, light gathering ability and resolving power for you to see, of course, hundreds and hundreds of craters on the moon. Uh, you're going to see planetary detail with this uh, telescope and um, uh, probably more exciting and more important, it's enough aperture for you to, to detect galaxies, to detect nebulae in the sky, but you have to get out to where it's dark. And what do I mean by dark? You need to go out on moonless nights where you can see the Milky Way in the sky by the naked eye, and um, you know, so dark that uh, at first maybe you can't even see your hand in front of your face. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the red dot finder. The red dot finder has um, an on off switch here and it does turn on a red dot. You can actually see two red dots in there, okay, with little circles. There is a battery compartment here in case you need to replace the battery for any reason. And there are two silver screws here. And when you adjust these silver screws, what it does is it slightly moves the rear red dot around so that you can line up the red dot with what's in the middle of the eyepiece of your telescope. Attaching the red dot is easy. All you have to do is slide it onto these two posts that are on there and just push it forward. And now it is attached and so you can see how this looks, okay? One of the things that I will point out is, is I think that the instruction manuals make reference to a hex wrench. Uh, we've changed this so that you don't have to have any tools to assemble this telescope. Um, there, it's, it's all pretty much almost completely pre-assembled. You can see from the video that there wasn't much assembly other than just putting the tube on and attaching the, the uh, finder. Uh, the next step is going to be, you know, how to uh, uh, put in the eyepiece. And I'll give you just some basic tips on observing and how to align that finder scope. So we got a couple of eyepieces. One is a 26 millimeter, and the other one's a 9.7. These are really nice eyepieces for this telescope. They're one and a quarter inch. Uh, you'll find out that they are of the Plossel design, which is the PL uh, nomenclature that's on this particular eyepiece, and also on the 9.7. And the way that you use them, and you always start with this eyepiece first. Look how large that, that eye lens is. It's a nice, generous size. This is gonna uh, also, the focal length of this is gonna produce a nice bright image for you. And it's always gonna be probably your sharpest image uh, when you're finding objects up in the sky. But to start off with, we just insert it like so. And then the next step for you to do is just to simply aim this telescope uh, out across the yard. Uh, maybe you find uh, a feature on a house or a distant uh, light pole or a distant uh, you know, power uh, line tower or something like that. But one of the things you're gonna notice is in the Newtonian telescope is everything is upside down, okay? And so this is uh, unexpected for a lot of people who are just first starting out with the telescope, but it is the actual natural property of a Newtonian telescope to show an image like this. 
It is not a spotting scope. This is an astronomical telescope. But, you know, folks, there is no upside down in space. So, um, but uh, we want to put in this low power eyepiece. We want to aim the open end of the telescope at a faint, or not a faint, but a far away object. And then what we're going to do is have whatever object centered up in the eyepiece here, we're going to look straight back through the scope, just like I'm doing right now. We'll turn on the red dot, and then I'm just going to adjust the red dot by adjusting these screws. You can tighten one while loosening the other, and it will adjust very slightly the red dot so that, and the goal is so that, that the red dot is actually on the same object that's in the eyepiece. At that point, that night I can take it out and I can aim it at a bright star, or I can aim it at the moon, and when I look in the eyepiece, I'm going to see the object in the eyepiece of the 26 millimeter. Chances are, though, it's not going to be centered because the parallax from something a few hundred yards away to something that's a quarter of a million miles away is different. And so I'm going to have to make, I'll get the moon centered here, and then I'll look through my red dot once again and center it up like so. And now the red dot is centered to whatever's in the eyepiece. At this point, no matter what I point the telescope at, the object's going to be in the center of the field of view. Remember, this is an astronomical telescope, not a spotting scope. Images on the ground will appear upside down, and that is normal. The other two optical accessories that you have here, as I mentioned before, is the 9.7 millimeter, and then you have a 2x Barlow. Now, both of these devices uh, increase magnification. The way the 2x Barlow works is we take the eyepiece out, we put the Barlow in, we tighten up the set screw, and then what we do is we put the eyepiece in, and we tighten up the set screw. You'll probably have to refocus to get a sharp image, but this is, what the Barlow does is it doubles the magnification of your eyepiece. So the 26 millimeter eyepiece used on this telescope will give you about 23 magnification. It, the telescope's focal length, think of this as maybe like a camera's telephoto lens, for example. This is a 600 millimeter focal length lens, okay? 600 divided by 26 is gonna give you 23, okay? Which means that objects are gonna be 23 times more magnified than they would be to the unaided eye. Um, but the other part that I will uh, let you know is that um, any uh, turbulence in the sky, which makes stars twinkle, by the way, if you go outside and you see stars twinkle, it looks really cool, right? But twinkling stars only happen because the atmosphere around you is turbulent, okay? And a telescope with a precision polished lens sees all, and it in fact sees turbulence really well, uh, better than you can with the unaided eye. So if we're magnifying the image 23 times, we're also magnifying any turbulence in the sky 23 times. Uh, the turbulence in the sky uh, can make stars change colors, it makes them scintillate, it makes them uh, boil in the eyepiece, and uh, so you try to observe when the sky gets quiet, okay? So think, think of it like you're looking through a lake full of water, okay? If we have a nice calm lake, we can see right through it very easily, but if we have turbulence, it causes distortions, okay? You have too much turbulence, uh, you're going to get so much distortion you can barely tell what's down in the bottom of a lake. So, or maybe not even at all. Uh, doubling the magnification uh, will step our magnification up to 46 power. Uh, but by the way, even at 23 power, you can still detect, although it'll appear very, very small, you can detect the rings of Saturn uh, with this. Um, Saturn's almost a billion miles away, so seeing the rings is kind of like a miracle in itself, but the lowest powers on a telescope also give you the brightest images. And uh, with the brightest images, you actually see the furthest distance. And so how much detail you see is determined by aperture, okay? So the bigger the aperture, the larger the aperture is than your eye increases resolution. That lets you see finer and finer details. 
more aperture also gathers more light than your eye can. And so this is a four and a half inch, imagine dilating your eye up to four and a half inches of aperture. You know, uh, a cat or an owl can see better at night than you can because its eyes are larger dilated than yours, okay? Uh, this gives you super night vision uh, with a four and a half inch aperture. Low power lets you see the furthest distance because the further away an object is, the fainter it is. And so if we wanna see a galaxy that's two million light years away, for example, uh, the light is, is, is very faint and by gathering it over four and a half inches, now we can see that galaxy with little problem at all. The 9.7 millimeter eyepiece on this telescope, this 600 millimeter focal length telescope, is going to give you uh, 61.8 magnification. So let's just call it 62 power, okay? If we want to, and that, that kind of magnification is great for looking at the moon. Uh, you can look at craters on the moon. Of course, it's gonna show you a little bit larger view of the planets uh, than, than the 26. Um, and uh, it is going to be uh, also good for looking at some deep sky objects, provided you're in a dark sky site, okay? Images do get fainter and because not as much light is passing through the eyepiece um, up to your eye when you do increase magnification. But on bright deep sky objects like globular star clusters, bright nebula like the Orion's Nebula, for example, uh, you know, those objects will show very nicely in, in uh, the 9.7. Uh, if you are going to step up to higher magnifications, let's say you're doing planetary observing and you got a good still night, you know, and a lot of twinkling stars, now we can throw in that Barlow lens and get up over 100 power with this telescope. And uh, you can see um, more um, uh, detail of, of the planets because you just get a little bit larger image scale. Uh, it's not that the detail is increasing because the detail is a function of aperture on the telescope, but it just has a little bit more image scale for you to observe the detail that's there. So, um, but as you step up in magnification, a beginner will soon learn uh, something that actually you already know, uh, that the Earth is rotating on its axis. And most of the time that that becomes very evident to you is when you're watching a sunrise or a sunset and you can see how quickly the, uh, the sun uh, is moving across the sky at that point. When you use a telescope, you're looking at a small cross section of the sky. And even with a 26 millimeter eyepiece, you're gonna see an object start to float out of the field of view in about a minute or so, okay? You use a 9.7 millimeter eyepiece, and now we're looking at a much thinner part of the sky, much smaller slice of the sky, and objects appear to be moving out of the field even faster. Some people get the impression that they're seeing the object move, but in fact, it's the Earth moving. Our Earth rotates on its axis about a thousand miles an hour on axis. So it is something that uh, really starts to connect you with the reality that uh, you're on a uh, flying planet through space looking at other celestial objects. And that's the really cool part about astronomy. Okay, so there's one other accessory which I didn't talk about that comes with this telescope and it's this adapter and it's for your smartphone. And so what you do is you take, you just simply take the rubber eye cup off the eyepiece, you drop it in, okay, just get the lens up flush with the top here and tighten it down with this set screw. Now what you can do is you can take a smartphone, you'll see, you know, a lot of smartphones have the lens over off to the side like this iPhone does, and you're just going to center it up over the eyepiece, okay, and you're going to press it down so that the suction cups hold it, when you have it attached, if you have this uh, telescope aimed at the moon, for example, you're going to see the moon in the eyepiece, okay? And then what you're going to do is you'll just zoom in um, and maybe tap on it so that you start to get a sharp image. And now you can start to take video, you can take stills, and it's amazing, an amazing way to take pictures of the moon. So I'm looking through my telescope here, but you'll notice something I'm doing that's probably something that you shouldn't do, which is to look through a window uh, from inside your house outside. You remember that the lens of the telescope resolves everything, including all the distortions in my window glass here, okay? 
Window glass is not polished optically flat, and I'll see virtually every defect that's in, in the window glass, and it will make images look soft, okay? You can do it for casual observing or just for fun, but uh, to get the sharpest images, you need to go outside and use this telescope uh, in the open air uh, because astronomy is an outdoor activity, and, uh, and this will allow you to get the best view, possible views through your telescope is to be outdoors. Uh, and to wait for the sky to calm down so the stars are not twinkling like crazy, okay? You want a nice steady sky to get the best possible views and the sharpest views of planets and the moon. Uh, but at low powers, you can still use the telescope no problem, even during a turbulent night. You're just looking for a clear, dark sky. And so uh, you'll uh, uh, do your deep sky observing during times where it's a moonless night. Uh, so you'll get a moon calendar uh, to, uh, you know, and you can find those online and find out when you're going to be heading towards new moon. The other thing you want to try to check out online is you want to find your local astronomy club. You want to join your astronomy club because you're going to learn the sky a hundred times faster. So you're going to buy star maps for this. Uh, you're going to buy a planisphere. I recommend uh, paper star maps, um, probably over the apps, you know, like you can have on your phone because the light that comes off your phone uh, will reduce your night vision and it'll make your amateur astronomer friends a little angry because uh, they have spent uh, 30 or 40 minutes getting dark adapted. What you'll see them with is dark red filtered flashlights. You can buy those, you can make those. Um, uh, Explore Scientific makes uh, a red flashlight that's very suitable for this. Um, but uh, when you go out and, and join an astronomy club and you go to their star parties, which is a great idea because they'll go to a safe location, you'll be with people that know what they're doing, I recommend that you observe with, you know, ask to set up next to someone that's knowledgeable. And that way you can see what they're doing. Uh, they will allow you to share the eyepiece, but remember that ask. You don't just go up and look through somebody else's telescope or start handling somebody else's equipment. Um, you just ask to look in the eyepiece. Uh, if you have kids doing this, have the kids put their hands behind their back uh, and learn how to steady your eye right over the eyepiece. If you're moving your head around, you're gonna see it's very difficult to see in the eyepiece. You'll see the stars flying through the field or it'll just look dark to you. If you're observing during the daytime, okay, and you're looking at, again through your telescope, I, I've mentioned this before, but images are upside down through this telescope. Uh, during the daytime too, uh, you will see a shadow in the middle and that is the shadow of the secondary. The shadow disappears when you're out observing at night because your eye dilates and you can't see the shadow anymore. It's an interesting effect, but um, uh, nevertheless, uh, there's nothing wrong uh, by seeing that shadow during the day. It's totally normal. Um, anyways, uh, you've got a great starter telescope with this National Geographic 114 millimeter. Uh, we strongly recommend you get involved in the community of amateur astronomy, really start doing some exploration, learn the constellations, learn how to find those galaxies and nebula, and explore your universe. Have fun. If you want to uh, contact us, you can call us at 866-252-3811 uh, and um, keep looking up.